All right, what we're gonna do today is a bit of a, a disassembly on a music player I got from China, the Raizu X02. Interesting thing about this music player is that it supports a lot of file formats, uh, but the way it supports them is pretty limited. For example, there's a hard limit on FLAC files at 120 kilobits a second. Let's find out uh, what exactly is going on here by taking a look at the DAC chip. If I can take it out of the box. Little player. Uh, I did a unboxing uh, a little bit earlier, which you can get access to. And uh, basically it's a tiny plastic player, 8 gigabytes internally, supports up to 128 gigabytes in this uh, micro SD card slot. The device is going to be opened up as gently as possible. It only costs $20, but I would like to uh, keep it functional if I can. Though that being said, as well as having delicate equipment, we are prepared for all eventualities. I'm going to be taking some photos as we go through because I'll be doing a post about this on the Audio Science Review website, and I want to make sure I've got photos and not just video. All right, a quick look at the device itself shows us that we have an edge all around. This indicates that it clipped together. Uh, the question is, how do we unclip it? I'm going to try it with my hands just to squeeze it a little bit, see if I can find any play. Uh, yeah, I got some play here around the micro SD card slot, but I suspect that's just deforming the plastic. Now the crack is bigger there. Uh, let's try elsewhere. No play. I'll try a little sharp tool here. You know what? It doesn't seem very clippy. It seems pretty permanently put together. That said, you might be able to see that on this edge we do have a bit of a crack visible. So you know, heck, why not? Let's start there. Okie dokie. Yeah, it's, it's prizing apart, that's for sure. And the plastic is getting damaged, but uh, we might have an avenue into this device. Or not, as the case may be. Gosh, it is really sealed up. All right, I guess it's time to get a little bit rougher with the device and pull it apart, regardless of whether the plastic is deformed or not. I'm pressing down, hoping that there is a clip at the edges, as with many electronic devices. But unfortunately, if there is a clip, it is not unclipping. All right, let's push in and pop this open. Hmm. Okay, there we go. I feel terrible to break apart a $20 device uh, because someone made this and they put energy into it and they put time into it. But this is science and we want to see why we have a weird DAC chip that has limits that are unexpected for 2019. That's uh Oh, here we go. We're popping open now. I'm going to take a photo of this, both to display my complete ineptitude in breaking apart electronic devices and just to provide a way for people to keep up to this on the actual blog. All right, so we're making progress. I'm going to keep splitting around the edge. Biggest thrill. There we go. Ah, uh, there's the edge clip. Wonderful. And here's the other one. Yeah. Now we are cooking. Oh yeah. I might even be able to put this back together. Oh boy. What did I break? Mm, well, you know, it's one of those things. What can you do? Alrighty. It popped open. We have a pretty simplistic circuit board here. Single chip. Let's see if we can get in close and look what that chip says. So it's a WP, incredibly long number chip. We're going to have to search online and see if we can find out what that is. There's a very small chip near the headphone output, and I'm trying to see what's printed on it. This is pretty difficult. It's very 
very hard to read. It's tiny. I'm going to turn on uh, flash photography and see if I can pick up some details. Moving in visually, the chip is upside down. Huh? Okay, I've got the chip. Uh, the tiny chip we've got here is a 587M. And then it's, that's the first uh, row of numbers and letters. And the second is TH994. Alrighty, so we got to find out what 587M TH994 is. Because that's right before analog output. The main chip is right here. Oh, 400 milliamp battery. It's a pretty nice device, actually. It's well put together. Uh, in case you're wondering, quite often with you know cheaply put together devices, you've probably seen this yourself, but in case you don't take apart devices, uh, you often get wiring done sloppily. But here, for instance, the battery wiring is nice and neatly tucked in, uh, nicely, nicely supported. It's well soldered. And looking at the device itself, look at the way they've soldered the joints. Everything is really good. This is incredible for a $20 device. All right, uh, I've seen all I can see in here. I'm going to pick up this piece which fell out. Uh, that's the power switch, which uh, actually is just loose. It's clipped in, which is great. I mean, it means I didn't actually break the device. All I did was rough up the edges. That's awesome. I might give this device to a kid I know so they can play around, have fun. Let's see if I can get the case on neatly again. Oh. We are back together. Are we in business? I just turned the power on. <laughs> I may have killed a device. Oh, what a pity. It snapped back together, but we're not getting power on. Uh, it might just be the button is screwed up. Now we're going to do what should never be necessary. We're going to disassemble it yet again. Mm. I hate using metal tools on the device. I'll try this plastic edging. Maybe it's open enough. Yes, the crack is wide enough now that I can use the plastic edging, which causes less destructive damage. All right. Let's try and open it up just using the plastic. Failure. Yeah, the plastic just doesn't have the leverage to open it up. Okay, dokey. Back we go. I am sorry, beautifully made little device. You may be only $20, but someone really worked on you. Okay. Dear Raizu, I realize that I have really messed up the finish on this device. And I understand that it's not a reflection of the device's engineering. It's more a reflection of my catastrophic approach to... Oh, interesting. I knocked it this way. Catastrophic approach to working on products. I'm just going to move the power supply onto the on and see if it powers up. We got nothing. That's unfortunate. I guess the device is dead. I'll play with it a little bit. See if I can bring it back. Who knows? Maybe just as an offhand note, the actual battery ran to zero. Maybe it would be unusual. Uh, it would be an unexpected result. The thing was fully powered a couple of days ago. But, okay, let's hunt for that DAC chip. It's going to go over to Amir. It's going to go over to the rest of the community. We're going to try and find out why does this thing play flack, but play it with a strong limitation. A limitation that effectively means you can only get audio at 16 bits uh, 48 kilohertz sampling rate. Now that's unusual as a limitation on flak.